Windsurf recently introduced Wave 3 of their updates, which introduced the long-awaited tab to jump and a model context protocol integration. We'll compare these updates to Cursor's recent updates. The tab to jump feature has been what has given Cursor a significant lead over Windsurf until now. MCP gives Windsurf access to private data, which is provided by private or secure servers. Without delay or time wasting, let's test MCP in Windsurf. I'm going to copy my MCP JSON configuration from RuCode. It's a Brave Search server and a Puppeteer server. You'll need a Brave API key for the Brave Search server. We'll test using a GitHub MCP since both Cursor and Windsurf are able to access the internet on their own. In Windsurf's cascade, you'll see a configuration icon called MCP just above the message text box. On the right click on Configure, an MCP config JSON file will be opened with a pop-up showing a sample GitHub configuration. Let's close it and paste the MCP configuration we copied from RuCode. Let's save the file and click on the refresh button in Cascade. The Brave MCP is recognized but fails because of a lacking API key. Let's add an actual GitHub MCP server. Let's copy the JSON template from the MCP server's GitHub repository and paste it into our MCP configuration. You'll need to create a GitHub private access token from GitHub. To create the token, go to GitHub and click on your profile at the top right then Settings. Then scroll down on the left until the very end and click on Developer Settings. Click Personal Access Tokens. Fine Grain Tokens. Then generate a new token. Authenticate and give your token a logical name. I suggest creating multiple tokens for different applications or roles. Set an expiration date, a scope, and generate the token. Paste the token in your Windsurf MCP configuration file and refresh the available MCP servers. A GitHub server will appear, and a green indicator will show that the connection is successful. Let's prompt Windsurf to show me all my repositories in an HTML file. I already see that it's not using the MCP server. We get to see one of the new features, which is the credit usage summary. It's not ideal, but let's tell Cascade directly to use MCP. Now it's calling the MCP server but using an incorrect GitHub username. Let's give it the correct username. It fetched some repositories and is calling their commit history endpoint. If we check how it looks, we see that it's correctly retrieving my GitHub repositories, but only public repositories. Let's tell it to also retrieve private repositories and show repo visibility. We see an MCP tool call failure and see that it's a permission issue. If we go back to our personal access token in GitHub and edit it, we'll see that access is indeed restricted to public repositories. Let's change it to all repositories. If we tell it to retry, we'll see that it successfully retrieved our private repositories as well through an MCP server. We can navigate to the GitHub repository to verify that it's private. We just need a dark theme and we can already challenge GitHub's UI. If we look at cursors changes, we can see that they also added MCP support Let's test it out. If we go to cursor settings, then features, then scroll down, we'll see a button to add a new MCP server. Let's try to add a new server. We are confronted with a foreign UI. Let's use the command connection type 
and try a command which works in other AI systems like Claude Desktop and Klein. We immediately don't have an option to enter environment variables, and it says no tools found. On Mac, using inline environment variables works, but it doesn't on Windows. Let's open DevTools since Cursor is still an Electron app to check for error details. It successfully retrieves the command, but doesn't give detailed error logs. Many people have this issue on the Cursor forum, so it's either it's fixed, or I'll create a separate video showing the hack. Moving on to the next feature, we have drag and drop images. Let's take a screenshot of the X website and drag and drop it to Cascade. We immediately see that there's a blinking bug. Agile delivery is great, but simple bugs should not be shipped. Let's tell it to mimic the website. While it's doing that, let's do the same in Cursor. We immediately see that the UI is more refined. Then we also see that there's no easy way to open Cascade as an editor, while Composer opens as an editor easily. If we look at the Windsurf version, we see that it mixed up the layout and is not that impressive. Windsurf and Cursor are inconsistent because some days they work very well, and some days not. And I always call this inconsistency being moody. It might be load balancing, distillation, or a custom temperature. In the cursor version, let's install the necessary dependencies and run it. It followed our cursor rules by using React, but doesn't use the CLI to initialize the app, and this causes errors. Another inconsistency, because sometimes it works. Let's give it the error so it can fix it. Let's update the YOLO command whitelist to allow for more terminal commands to be executed automatically. Both Cursor and Windsurf have this feature. If we start the development server, we see that it wasn't able to resolve the errors. If we retry in Windsurf, we see that it behaves differently using the same large language model and now aligns the layout correctly. The next feature we'll compare with Cursor and Windsurf is Tab to Jump. In Cursor, if we rename a property, we see that it suggests renaming a related property. Using Tab again renames all occurrences in the file. The problem is that it doesn't jump to all other uses of the property in the project, which is unfortunate. If we navigate to a class which uses the property and play around it, then the refactoring suggestions appear not the greatest user experience if you ask me. If we try the same thing in Windsurf and rename the property, we unfortunately see no tab suggestions. They mysteriously only happen if we rename the property on top. After we accept the suggestion to rename a related property, it doesn't suggest refactoring the rest of the file. Windsurf also doesn't jump to the next file and refactor. In Cursor, if there are multiple refactoring changes close to one another, it takes two tab presses to apply the changes, but Windsurf correctly uses only one tab press. In conclusion, we see that Cursor narrowly wins against Windsurf for these particular tests. There are previous videos in this channel of us comparing different versions of Cursor and Windsurf, so subscribe and hit the notification bell to be notified of upcoming comparison videos. Consider supporting this channel by buying me a coffee using the super thanks button. Thank you for tuning in.